here, so. That's actually great. Like, I, and here's a, a funny part. A lot of people in our community are finishing their PhDs or doing something, and like, they're, they're like, it's the perfect timing for them to see, like, what we're, we're delivering. Yeah. yeah. Very cool. For sure. No, I love, dude, the notebook, everything looks great. All the notebooks and, I mean, it's just like, like I, I Levkov, uh, Mike, um, hit me up when the Kaggle notebooks like first started and he was like, can you help me with this? I'm like, well, here's what I would do and this is what I would do, you know, but like, I don't really know how to do any of this stuff. Like I kind of did it because I worked for an Amazon advertising agency for a while. And so oh, wow. I would, you know. So I would do uh, sentiment analysis, like, you know, NLP pulling stuff out of ratings of like competitor products, essentially like figuring out which products like we should be advertising on their pages to poach and think, you know what I mean? Like nice. how do we, how do we edit the descriptions for our products so that, you know, we're more likely to get better ratings in the future. You know, it's just like, it's not a bug, it's a feature kind of thing. Right. It's yeah. just like, like, you know, beds and all sorts of weird shit and so like i had some but dude i was way over my head in that job like you know it was like an upwork job like 25 bucks an hour like i was like just like trying my damnedest to like just like learn things on the fly pick other people's codes from github and like you know just, like, stack overflow up basically <laughs> stack overflow driven development yeah <laughs> <laughs> So it was really cool to like kind of jump in and be like, oh, this is how you like do it and do it right and like have a finished product at the end. <laughs> well, yeah, I wouldn't call that finished product, but like something that will definitely point us towards that. So Right, 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 right. <laughs> All right, guys. Um, so I'll kick it off. I think we have um, everyone. Not sure if Daniel will be joining uh, today. I'm still exhausted and brain dead, by the way. So okay. if I if I don't make any sense, just interrupt me. <laughs> All good, bro. I can only yeah. imagine. So uh, there are a couple of things that I wanted to talk through on the communications call today. Uh, main one, the pressing one, is um, basically the need for that post uh, submission webinar, because we've you, you know we've delivered those notebooks notebooks, but there's not really you know much feedback going on and that's primarily because we're not like Kaggle is not the place where all the medical researchers and researchers hang out in general and that's why we need that uh, post submission webinar basically i need help to create google doc outline of kind of like key things we want to um run through uh, through that webinar uh key um, uh, th uh, there is one by the uh, way Nice work. Um, it doesn't have much in it yet, but we have a Trello card and, and I added it there. I, I, I probably didn't add you to the Trello card though. Nice. Uh, let's see. Uh, but yeah, just uh, if we can crowds, crowdsource that Google Doc, fill it out with, um, first of all, we need to figure out what are like key people that will be delivering the, the content and I'm not sure what's the best way. Maybe going through the notebooks uh, and kind of having the individuals that worked on the on the stuff deliver like explanations. I feel, for example, the risk factors is probably the most explained notebook. Transmission one is a little bit less explained just because we were making submission four minutes before the or, yeah before the deadline, so that was a constraint. Um, VT1 is kind of self-explanatory because it's actual user interface and, and like actual UI that you play around, but still probably, you know, worth spending some, some, ex uh, some time to explain what happened there. And I think what would be cool is actually inviting a couple of, um, you know, people from the medical space or researchers to jump in for like quick five minute overview feedback on what they're seeing if like if that makes sense or if it's completely wrong like just just being very transparent in terms of uh, the validity of usefulness of the results that we produced so that's kind of my thinking about it yeah do we have a list of 
not of like subject matter experts that are will, that, that already or, or should we start one like are we thinking hospital administrators in addition to doctors in addition to policymakers good question like we probably need to define a list of like personas that we want to invite and then go from there and figure out if they're present in the current uh, team database if not we can always reach out I mean, or just like put a call out to people like, cause I just, I know through somebody, you know, a, a, a lot of prominent doctors and hospital administrators in Denver that I'm sure would be willing to, to talk and to kind of check things out and kind of give us some feedback. Yeah. Okay. Um, is there someone who can help us organize this list of personas and Shannon? <laughs> oh, okay. Um, so this list of, wait, okay. I, just to clarify, are you talking about people external to this organization or inside yeah. this? Primarily well, external, probably. But primarily external, yeah. yeah. Specific people or places where we would advertise this? So we start from personas and then we figure right. out where to find them. Okay. Yeah, I can do that. Okay. Great. That sounds great. So once we have that, we can figure out if we have them internally. And I bet we have some people like that Randall, a uh, physician, super qualified. Um, we just need to make sure we properly integrate him because he might be overloaded with, first of all, amount of stuff that was happening in Slack. And also not like we need probably a key like points, talking points, why we need these people to join this webinar. Something like that. You, you know what I mean? Like it's not just hanging out or just yeah. like daily call or like daily problem solving. It's no, it'd be like, like an interview. Yeah, kind of. So, okay, again, the goal, we're, bas we're looking for an audience to this webinar and the goal is to get their feedback on the work we've done so far. This is yep. the main, okay. Okay, I'm making a card for this. And essentially, like, let's start the, uh, the list of personas. Let's uh, figure out the places where to find them. Uh, I'm sure lots of people will volunteer to reach out or, you know, again, connect through their network. Uh, we probably have to put some, not script, but just like something that each team will prepare in terms of yeah. the structure to go through. I don't think we should be doing more than one hour. Like if we're going over one hour, we're doing something wrong. So I have a 65 minute structure that I built inside this document. If you want to take a look nice. a 65, mostly to give an even number of minutes to everybody um, and some time for intro closing and Q and a. Okay. Do you see my screen? Yes. Okay. So 65 minutes, opening statements, team presentations, four minutes each. Uh, closing statements. Okay, um, Q and A. So what's missing here is, wait, where does the sixty-five come from? Oh, Unless I got the math wrong, but okay. I guess I got four twelves and then I got it. Um, uh, so probably um, uh, subject matter expert integration or like. Uh, I don't know, call it interview. And we should probably give at least five minutes per so person. That limits us to probably having only three, three spokes people. Like obviously we'll have way more on, on the call ideally, but just the ones that we kind of not qualified, but based on their, um, their credentials and their potential impact. So the, these people in these interviews wouldn't be general audience, as in the Q&A below, they would be specific people that we would get feedback from on the spot? Yeah, I actually don't think we should have Q&A for public audience. Um, I mean, we just won't have time if we do it right. Like, 
ideally, and our goal should be having at least 100 people on this webinar, given the potential impact of it, if it's useful, again, a lot of assumptions, but having at least um, 100 committed uh, participants, also figuring out uh, ideal time zone uh, or time for uh, maximum impact. Do you, think it, do you think it might work to have each notebook presented as like a duo? So maybe somebody who is involved in the development as well as an expert that they've lined up in advance, cool. prepared in advance. Yeah. So like each section would be kind of like co-presented and then the the medical expert would could really just work with that notebook leader to kind of sync up their story. True. Okay. So how how do we structure that? That would probably involve us um when we're contacting the subject matter expert, we're giving them a choice, right? Like wh which of these four are the most like relevant to, to your interest or something like that. And we know some of these interests based on the, our internal activity. For example, Randall gravitates towards the risk factors. He has been on a couple of these calls. So he was the one to give feedback about prioritization uh, there was another MD, Ruslan Alouk, who can also help. Um, but for other tasks, like we, we need to qualify that intent in interest. Does it make sense? Yeah, because any medical expert that is truly an expert is not necessarily going to be able to speak across all four areas. So it may be better to like really prepare them well for that one area and then kind of co-present it. I guess my other thought just in listening to you all is, is the goal to get a very large live attendance and therefore, you know, really pick, carefully pick the time slot or would the goal more to be to get a certain number of people to watch it within the first three days where Certainly you'd want a decent live audience, but that wouldn't be the main focus. That's a good question. I think we don't really care about live aspect, aspect as much because we, the Q&A is not really part of it. It's more about exposure. So yes, maybe like having, you know, 100 uh, or so is, is fine. And then we just uh, refocus our efforts to distribute that, that recording. And we can, basically we can invite reporters to this webinar too, mm -hmm. and make them that vehicle to write stories about this webinar and basically attract attention to the recorded video. That's probably a great way to get the recording out is to have a few reporters commit to covering the event. Yeah. And again, we can give them those, you know, things that they always are looking for, like the embargo and whatnot, and just exclusivity. Yeah. yeah. Um, within the group, do you have a way to take pre-registrations for the webinar? Because I think we've all experienced, you know, you have a webinar sounds really interesting and you intend to go, but then you don't actually show up. So I'm wondering if we, do we have an organizational capability to collect pre-registrations? So we need a web page to uh, collect signups no. for event. We can easily do that. We just need a person like Rohan, uh, or I can do it based on Rohan's availability. By the way, Rohan should be uh, joining us. Yeah, I think he's, he's here. He's the guy who's helping us uh, create the new version of the website that we should probably, jump into discussing uh, in probably in a few minutes. Just heads up. But yeah, good good point. Need a web page to collect signups for event. Uh, that, that basically should um, auto add them to the event. Our favorite Google Calendar part of uh, the things. Okay. Well, I feel that that's a good start, right? So just to clarify, um, 
So I, I had thrown down the Q and A ten minutes. Um, do you? And I had envisioned that this is when like some of the one hundred audience members would have questions. Is this not it? Like that? If you don't think that's worthwhile, then maybe those ten minutes could be what we absorb yeah. into the subject matter expert interviews. Yeah, I think so. And we can do more of like actual Q and Q and A sessions. Like let's assume there are people that are interested in being integrated. And we can host specific like subject matter uh, expert Q and A sessions or or something, and dedicate those to specific notebooks. Um, if we have reporters at this event, shouldn't there be a Q and A targeted at them? Mm, I think. Yeah, to allow the reporters to ask questions. Is that what you're thinking? Yeah. Yeah. If, if we get reporters, I think we should put yeah. some time in for them at the end. Okay. So. Reporters q and Okay, so did you want, okay, um, so we have 65 minutes. Did you want five minutes per, per spokesperson, three spokespeople? Uh, so as we just discussed, uh, we should probably combine this. Um, gotcha, okay. So yeah, I think 12 so minutes is fine. Okay, 12 minutes and it's combined and then so, so we have 10 minutes for Q and A budgeted and we can, we can make that number different depending on its importance as you guys see it. Yeah. All right. Uh, well, this sounds great. Uh, let's try to do, to, I, I mean, like at least finalize some structure by, okay. So let's, let's hope to have this webinar like next Tuesday? Too okay. soon? Um, I think it might be too soon. Too soon if we're reaching outside the organization for audience and you want a hundred people. Yeah. Because we haven't even we haven't finalized what this is. We haven't advertised it. We haven't planned our outreach strategy, and it's it's less than a week. All right. So not Tuesday then. Uh, let's let's do Wednesday. <laughs> I see. You obviously want to do it really <laughs> <Steve> soon. <Jobs>. <laughs> <laughs> okay. No, but I mean, there there is a relevancy and timing factor to it. So even if if it's not perfect, even if you know it's it's uh, okay, I think the sooner we do it, the better. So let's try to to hit Wednesday. Um, is there anyone with marketing experience here? We do have a bunch of marketing people. I can bring some of the marketing expertise, uh, you know, given on uh, my availability. So we probably need a marketing plan for it. I actually um, meant on this call right now, who can sign up for some work here? I don't think so. Okay. Um, yeah, we definitely need to find somebody to do that then. <laughs> Okay. Um, All right. So uh, the the last uh, part of today's meeting, I want to do a quick um, review of the new website that Rohan uh, was able to put up. Um, maybe Rohan, you can share your screen, and we can go through through the sections. Or do you want me to to open it? Um, I'll try to share the screen and show it. Um, just give me a moment. Okay. Can you, can you see what I'm sharing? Ooh, nice. Yep, we can see it. All right, great, yep. Um, so this is the landing. Uh, we can edit the content, um, the copy, the images, some, all the sponsors, publications, so it all links to the actual articles on their sites. And then uh, just bite-sized information that's easy to read and understand what exactly we're doing. So if you guys just want to have a quick read, then I'll scroll down slowly. Let's okay. Wait, did you show the sponsors before this information? Uh, yes. So this is the landing page. Okay. Um, and then you have sponsors. It just shows that 
um, our organization is backed by um, other big companies so that um, you know what we're doing is serious and then the major complications it's just adding more um, credibility to what we're doing and then if you click on learn more it takes you directly down to what's going on okay gotcha yeah. and then we're trying to help researchers answer four questions and then all four of them are here uh, i got these questions straight from um, the Kaggle website, um, but if you need me to change them, I, I can. Have you had and a chance to uh, to add the subtitle to these tasks? Because um, remember the first call we were discussing the feedback. Right. So yeah. uh, where do I get that um, uh, explanation from? Straight from Kaggle, or do we have have it saved somewhere? So. Ideally, you can just ask communications team uh, the Slack in Slack channel or create a travel card and assign someone from communications, and that's probably the best way. I think Shannon can help you with uh, some of these, um, or Daniel should be able to. All right, and I was also thinking that we could have a separate page for every task in case you have mm -hmm. some dates or information or something that you want to post. The actual the notebook topic. stuff, because essentially Kaggle is not the best place and people are confused by Kaggle as a platform, all the sidebars and all that. So we can, we can make the uh, individual pages for those notebooks. Yeah, so then we could just connect these to those, you know, and I'll mm -hmm. put some indicator to that. Um, and then this bit of interview. Mm -hmm. And then the same thing what we had on the um, on the original website. We need and um, put more to that. Um, and this then, looks yeah. really cool. But if I were, so I've been sharing this website with people and um, if I were really new to this concept of this organization, I would want to know something about who we are before I care about who's sponsoring us. Um, so and does this answer this question, um, this little bit uh, paragraph here? I mean, it's, it's good. I don't think it's very specific though. Yeah, I get what okay. you're saying. Uh, the fact that on our current website, there is a section that explains who we are is probably more descriptive. And the typically people tend to ignore this kind of header and they don't read this stuff inside the subtitle. So it might, be, it might be better to have a section right underneath that explains a little bit more about who we are. And maybe it, it could be shorter than the really nice detailed one. And then you can still link down to the detailed one if you really want to make the sponsors prominent. But like, you know, as someone who wants to volunteer, I don't care about the sponsors very much. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Or at least, it, at least it isn't my first worry. It's yeah. probably my second worry. Um, yeah, I agree. And I agree with Rohan's point on, you know, credibility of that. Uh, but yeah, I also agree with uh, with the nature of, our organization that you know it's not really about the sponsors it's really about the impact okay so go ahead uh, quick uh, quick feedback points so we we're still lacking some of the content for this page right so under sponsors there's uh, like contributing info or, or something so uh, right so I need text to that what would you like me to add who can give me that um, you know content for this bit yeah so basically it would be great if you could put a list of things that uh, you're still waiting on um, and we can fulfill them one by one all right okay, okay. Um, so, so can I move on to yes uh, the quick point uh, on this the footer we still have some links that are not uh, clickable in there right because we don't have pages to those again like privacy policy Shall I get something off of Google or? I think not having them is better than having something that, uh, that is template. We okay, have to make so sure I, that we're able to follow it, right? Whatever it is. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So yeah, let's just so then I can remove these. Yeah. Yeah. No problem at all. 
Do you want to jump um, into other pages? Mm -hmm. So basically, what are info you upload? They have everything in a descending order, all the way down to. Um, nice. And then team. So um, and Arthur was speaking that we'd have an air table, which would, you know, people would be able to filter and get more information. So. Um, I can either remove this page for now because it doesn't show anything or keep it as is and you can guys feel as well. Then can we add a calendar page that has the calendar that's at the bottom of the daily progress? Or yeah. is that because I, I use that calendar a lot and I'm constantly scrolling to the bottom. <laughs> and it's ugly. So maybe we can do something with that too. Right. So again with the calendar, I thought we could use a table because it's really fantastic. Um, so Do you have an maybe example how, how that right looks here. like, and maybe if you can send that into communication channel. Uh, could you please repeat that? I can get you. If if you can send an example how a calendar looks in in the air table, so we can mm -hmm. better yeah, understand. Sure. Yeah, but uh, yeah, let's let's probably create another tab that is calendar, or okay. Yeah. You mean another option here in the menu, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Okay, cool. No problems at all. Um, and then here, um, this is where the volunteers would sign up. Okay. And then um, I think we had a need for two more forms. Daniel hasn't given me the content to the forms. At the moment, they're empty. I can remove these. That won't be a problem at all. And I'm just the volunteers. And I think you spoke something about an events form, so I can make another tab and have events there. That's probably a separate uh, page. For example, for each webinar, we're, we would have a separate page that we'll be sharing and people would uh, have uh, to submit form in there. Um, all right, um, I didn't quite get you. So every event gets a separate page and then every page has a form, is that what you mm -hmm. mean? Yep. Okay, fine, no problem, yeah. yeah. Uh, well, looks this looks great. I think that's definitely the the next direction that we should be taking. There are obviously lots of you know small feedback points that we should be assembling. I hope uh, people that will be watching this video, including Daniel, uh, also provide some feedback asynchronously. Uh, the key piece, though, the way of offers that I'm hearing are the fact that um, there are. There are basically some pieces that you're still waiting on, but we're not aware that you're waiting on them. So if you can post them in the communication channel or Trello cards, and that's probably the best way to, to resolve those blockers. Does that sound good? Yeah, sure, no problem. All right. Um, well, uh, Rohan, there's something that's possibly important that I should make you aware of. Um, <laughs> I shared the coronawide.org link today uh, with a bunch of people at my work as I've been doing, and uh, it didn't pass or it got blocked. I've never seen it get blocked until today, but- um, What was blocked? Our IT department blocked it as a suspicious site. I have filed a ticket with them. I would like, I asked them to explain why so that we can figure out why what? and fix it. But if you see anything that seems to be in violation of best practices for maybe the join form, or I don't know if it's the way things are worded. I was able to visit this website routinely until now, but I shared it with someone and they were like, hey, it's blocked. And I, oh no, it's blocked for me too. Not good. Yeah, maybe. Uh, that's crazy. At the moment, this can, is live. If you can provide mm -hmm. some uh, feedback from the IT department on the, like the reason for blocking, that would help us understand. Yeah, that. definitely filed a ticket. So I'll be seeing if I can pester anybody about it. All right. Um, I do have to jump on another call, but I think we, we did accomplish two big things. Basically the structure for the post-submission webinar. I hope we'll, we'll make some progress this weekend. Uh, Daniel should be instrumental to that too. And Rohan is doing a great job with the website. We just need to do better to fulfill his, his requests and make sure that we're all on the same page in terms of which sections should be included on homepage, 
and what's the priority order and things like that. Because obviously Rohan is taking on initiative to create this without much guidance. So it's, it's our responsibility to give him at least some guidance. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thank you guys. I'll be uploading the recording shortly. Thanks. Bye-bye. Thanks, guys.